Welcome to Zoo Babies, your front row seat to all the cutest, cuddliest and craziest cubs and chicks in the animal kingdom. First up, let's drop in on these two beautiful white tiger cubs who were born in the Amersfoort Zoo in the Netherlands. Measuring the length of a ruler and weighing only 700 grams at birth, the twins spent their first weeks in a closed cage with their mother. Almost eight weeks later, they were big enough to show themselves to the public and, under the watchful eye of their mother, Rina, explore a bit of the outside world. White tigers are very rare, with about 200 thought to be in existence in zoos worldwide. Other than their white fur, the white tiger is known for its icy blue eyes, its pink nose and creamy white fur, covered with chocolate-coloured stripes. Apart from their colour, white tigers aren't much different from their yellow and black striped relatives. They're descended from the Bengal tiger, which is found in Bangladesh in India. These two cubs in Amersfoort Zoo were born after their five-year-old mother, Rina, mated with Brooklyn, a white male that moved from a German zoo to the Netherlands, which is also called Holland. Although Brooklyn is kept in a separate cage for now, the zoo caretaker says he'll soon be joining the family. This zoo is the only one in the Netherlands with a white tiger collection, and caretaker Marjo Herdemaker proudly showed the cubs to the public and press. Compared to orange tigers, white tigers tend to be larger both at birth and at full adult size. White tigers can't see as well as normal tigers and their fur reacts to cold temperatures. It goes darker when it gets colder. The white tiger holds a very special place in the local traditions of cultures. In China, it was believed to be the god of the West and the South Koreans have a picture of a white tiger on their flag. But all these little chaps care about is having all the time in the world to play. <laughs> Jing Jing is a four-year-old Dalmatian dog, and she's decided to adopt five newborn lion cubs who were recently born at the Badaling Wildlife Zoo in China. Jing Jing had just given birth to 10 of her own puppies two months ago. But she's only allowed to feed one of them so she can save enough milk to feed the five hungry cubs. No doubt she's been keeping very busy since taking on the role of mother. She now has to feed the five little lions every day, stopping only for occasional short breaks in the shade. The lion cubs won't leave Jing Jing until they're four months old and can eat solid food. This year, over 50 cubs were born at the Bardeling Wildlife Zoo, adding to a population of 200 lions. The Dalmatian is a type of dog known for its white coat and black spots, and there's no other dog like this. Dalmatians are very fast runners and are known for their friendly personality and very good memories. When the lion cubs are finished feeding, the children who visit the zoo get a chance to play with them. Everyone wants to pat the baby lion's fur because it feels so soft. These lions will grow up to be very big and you wouldn't want to pat them then. This little female African elephant called Tanya wants to say hello to everyone who's come to visit her at the Friedrichsfelder Zoo in eastern Berlin. Her mother, 20-year-old Pori, has been doing an amazing job raising little Tanya. Elephants cry, play and laugh just like humans. They also have incredibly long memories. These zookeepers are having lots of fun with Tanya as they all enjoy playing. Elephants are sensitive animals. If a baby complains, the entire family will go over to touch and caress it. Elephant trunks can get very heavy, 
and it's not unusual to see an elephant resting its trunk over one of its tusks. Elephants don't actually drink with their trunks, instead they use them as tools to drink with. They fill their trunk with water and then use it as a hose to pour it into their mouth. Little Tanya is having lots of fun as she swings her trunk and runs along to keep up with her mother. <laughs> Over in France at Paris Vincennes Zoo, another big baby has been born. This is a hippopotamus, one of the most dangerous animals in the world. They love spending their day in the water and mud and come out when the sun goes down to graze on grass. This is the older brother of a 26-day-old 15-kilogram male dwarf hippopotamus named Alban, who was also making his first public appearance. Dwarf or pygmy hippos, whose natural habitat is the forests of West Africa, are a rare endangered species. There may be less than 3,000 of them left in the wild. Little Alban still drinks his mother's milk, but in a few months' time, he'll be put on a diet of hay, carrots, potatoes and alfalfa, and he'll be allowed to join his older brother in the large outdoor pool. But for now, he's enjoying being sprayed by water from the tap alongside his mother and soaking up his new environment. Every year, the London Zoo must count the many animals it's home to. First to stand up and be counted are the penguins that are celebrating a very successful breeding year. These seven new additions are one of the zoo's great success stories. It's an integral part of managing our collections every year. Next on the list is this scaly creature, a lizard, which can be found almost anywhere except Antarctica. The llamas were counted next, followed by the jellyfish. Jellyfish are found in every ocean from the surface to down to the deep sea. Most jellyfish just drift in the water, unlike these tropical fish. Then there's a the tough job of trying to count the ants. It's an impossible task. Last stop is a visit to the tiger cage, where these rare and beautiful animals are enjoying the fresh morning air. Their numbers are so low that in the wild anything can happen. Um, that can actually endanger them even more. So breeding these animals in captivity is extremely important. Counting all the zoo inhabitants takes a whole week, and the animals are studied by the handlers to make sure they're settling in well and that they're happy in their environment. As well as counting animals, London Zoo has been very busy setting up an online library through which they sell unique images of animals to the public, such as pictures of these wonderful long-necked giraffes. Anyone can go online and look at the photographs housed at London Zoo, some of which date back as far as 100 years. There's also lots of information on what the animals like to do and eat and where they come from in the wild. This is a deer with large antlers on its head next to a male lion. And there's a picture of a zebra, followed by a friendly ferret. They're always the favourite animals at the zoo, which you would expect, the big cats, the penguins, the giraffes, those sorts of things. So I think people will be particularly interested in those sorts of animals. And we've got some really cute shots of them as well. But I think the historical side and also the artworks will, I think, will actually you know, be something that's really interesting because it's just so unique and you just don't see those sorts of things anywhere else. The zoo is also home to the zebras, which are easily recognised by their distinctive white and black stripes which come in different patterns that make every zebra unique. This little lemur is busy munching away on a piece of fruit, its favourite food. It 
sits on the branch of the tree without a worry in the world, just like this tree-dwelling sloth. These bushy ring-tailed lemurs are hanging out in their treehouse. All of these animals will be getting their photographs taken so they can join the online collection with all the other animals. The pictures include some of the most loved animals in the zoo. They also show how attitudes have changed towards the way animals are treated, both past and present, and give a real historical perspective of the zoo's activities. The London Zoo has a long history in protecting animals so that they don't die out and are protected for future generations. All the money raised from the sale of the images will go to ensure that conservation efforts will continue around the world. And now for something a little different. These animals at SeaWorld in San Diego would like to sing you a song. Can you recognize it? That's right, it's Jingle Bells. Why don't you sing along? a talented bunch. Italy is home to great pasta and beautiful buildings. And it also recently played home to something called a reptile exchange fair, where people from all over the world came to look at scaly creatures, like these lizards who had fun climbing up the branches. Also on show were 40 of the world's most dangerous snakes, including green mambas, cobras and rattlesnakes. Snakes are just one of the members of the animal group called reptiles. The group also includes crocodiles, lizards and turtles. Reptiles are cold-blooded animals that heat up their body temperature by lying in the sun or lower it by crawling into the shade. Their body temperature adjusts to the temperature of its surroundings. Because of this, snakes that live in colder climates must hibernate through the winter. They will find burrows or caves and fall into a deep sleep until the weather warms up enough for them. These snakes are dangerous and need to be lifted by a hook into their glass cages. Fabrizio has been handling snakes for years and loves his work. He says that if he didn't love what he did, he wouldn't run the risk of handling poisonous snakes. One of the most fearsome of the snakes is the green mamba, whose charms can kill a victim within 30 minutes with its nervous system numbing white venom. This scary fact was not something that appeared to bother handler Fabrizio. Everyone admired this beautiful green frog on the day. Green frogs are found in a wide variety of habitats that surround most inland waters, such as swamps, ponds and lakes. Green frogs eat lots of different insects and crustaceans, such as slugs, snails, crayfish, spiders and flies. What about this tiny snake? This man wasn't worried about his baby snake slipping between his fingers as he showed it off to the public. The special event brings together fans of reptiles as well as animal lovers in general. Spider enthusiast Stefano, who brought three of the eight-legged creatures, says that these strange types of pets are more appealing than other animals. He thinks spiders are a lot easier to look after than a dog and a lot cleaner around the house. One of the most exciting animals on show were these bright green creatures. One woman says, although reptiles aren't her favorite, they have their own appeal. 
No, they're not disgusting. After all, you can hold them in your hand. They're smooth. If they're not bad, like the python which bit me, they're not ugly. But as I told you, I love more this kind of animal. This lady's ferret wasn't the only other animal on show, as lots of visitors brought their own pets. The idea of the fair was also to exchange facts about the different animals and even to exchange the animals, to help discourage the illegal importation of exotic pets. In the same ways that zoos do, the fair aims to promote knowledge about reptiles and how to care for them properly. The majority of the animals on show here were bred in captivity and not taken from the wild. Watch out, this furry little creature likes to jump. This soft animal is called a snow leopard. It's a large cat native to the mountain ranges of Central Asia and Eastern Tibet. Unlike other leopards or tigers and lions, snow leopards cannot roar. They are well known for their beautiful fur. The snow leopard has a whitish tan coat with ringed spots of dark ashy brown and rosettes of black. Its tail is heavy with fur, and the bottoms of its paws are covered with fur for protection against snow and cold. The snow leopard is one of the three most endangered big cats in the world. During summer in the wild, the snow leopard usually lives above the tree line, on mountainous meadows and in rocky regions very high up. In winter, it comes down into the forests it leads a quiet life often alone, except for mothers who stay with their cubs for long periods of time. Snow leopards like to eat meat and can eat animals much bigger than themselves because they have very strong teeth and can jump high in the air to catch their prey. Let's say hello to this baby calf. A calf is the term used for the child of a cow and a bull. Her name is Baby Footy, and she's enjoying having her picture taken. Footy is four months old. When they're born, calves feed from their mother's udder for a few weeks before starting to eat grass. When they begin eating foods other than their mother's milk, they're said to be weaning. Footy's very serious-looking mother watches her everywhere she goes. As a mother, she's very protective. She doesn't want anything to hurt her calf, and if anybody comes too close, she will shake her head or scrape the ground with her hoof. If she feels very threatened, she might take a few steps forward to warn the person to step back. Lots of other animals are also called a calf, the young of bison, camels, dolphins, elephants, giraffes, hippos, seals and yaks are also called calves. Calves are rarely born with horns. They will often develop them as they grow older. Footy is growing up in the open air, on sunshine, green grass and lots of love. The adult cows are used to standing around all day and generally eat grass most of the time. They have one stomach, which has four different sections. Cattle have a very good digestive system. They can swallow food, push it back up their throat again, and re-chew it as cud. The cud is then re-swallowed and digested again. Footy and the cattle are raised by the African farming community, the Maasai. Most still have their cows, which are their prized possession and are very respected and loved animals. This man raises the cattle and makes sure they're all healthy. The farming community also has plenty of sheep, which only eat plants and grass. The sheep live a quiet life alongside the cattle, eating lots of food daily and standing in the grassy areas. They're known for sleeping standing up, not like Footy, who rests in the grass, bathing in the afternoon sun.
The Buanizare Zoo has just welcomed three new guests that originally come from Asia, a snow leopard and two tapirs. The animals come from Canadian and Chilean zoos and are part of the zoo's reproduction program. The two-year-old female snow leopard is still rather shy, but zoo officials hope she will warm to her new companion, Napoleon. According to the zookeeper, it's very common for leopards to reject each other at first, because in the wild they like to be by themselves. But as time goes by, they learn to accept each other. This pair of tapirs is also new to the zoo. Tapirs are often mistaken for pigs or anteaters. They're in the odd-toed, hooved animal family, as are the horse and rhinoceros. All four species of tapir are endangered. This Malay tapir is native to Asia, where its natural enemies are the tiger and man. The Malay tapir is the largest in the family and has the darkest of colors, with black shoulders, head and legs, and a white band around the body. All baby tapirs have light-colored horizontal watermelon-like stripes, but these disappear as they grow up. Tapirs don't see very well, but their sensitive ears and strong sense of smell help make up for this. Although they live in dry forests, they do like to swim. They sink to the bottom and walk along the riverbed to feed, and have been known to submerge themselves underwater to allow small fish to pick parasites off their bodies. The Buanazara Zoo has also introduced another new addition to its animal family, three baby lambs. They are four-day-old mouflon lambs. Hunters have almost made Argentina's population of these wild sheep with large horns and a reddish-brown coat extinct. These mouflon lambs are being cared for and protected by the zoo. They're very strong animals and can adapt well to hot or cold temperatures. The zoologists are part of the zoo's research team, and it's time for them to have their picture taken. The mouflons are very easy to care for. They don't need a lot of space. When they settle in and make up their minds that this is their new home, they'll usually calm down and take up with the herd they've been put with. Mouflons enjoy eating hay, especially alfalfa and soybean varieties. The hay, feed and water are essential for a good, healthy herd of mouflons, which are famous for being smart and playful, and as affectionate as any dog or cat. Join us next time on Zoo Babies for lots more chicks, calves and cubs. <laughs>